Okay, so I went through and looked at this week's Labster simulation, and it's really just more, it's more practice and more ways of, of thinking about stoichiometry um, problems, just to really cement some of these concepts. Um, and so it's basically going to have you do things like balance reactions, predict how much you could make, have you do some of the algebra um, to rearrange some of these equations. Um, so pretty, pretty similar to stuff we've started going over. Um, so I thought I'd start by us doing some practice stoichiometry problems um, to you know, make it go all the way through one of these um, percent yield problems so we can see it front, front to back how it works and then um, go from there. So let's, let's start by doing this reaction as a warm up. So start by balancing it and then figure out how many moles of aluminum bromide you can make from 25 grams of aluminum. And then I will work through this one and then we'll do one, um, one that uh, I write a little bit differently and get some practice seeing it a little bit differently in a few minutes. And so this should look pretty similar. We just added one step on to the beginning of if I give you a mass of a compound or an element to start with, before we can do the stoichiometry step of, of converting moles of one compound to moles of another from the balanced reaction, before we can do that, we need to be in moles. So if I give you grams to start with, you got to use molecular weight, get to moles, and then you can go moles of aluminum to moles of product. So this part was from the from the periodic table. And this part is from the balanced reaction. I suppose I should explicitly define this. Um, the chemistry abbreviation for reaction, since we talk about reactions so much, we don't always want to write out reaction all the time. RxN is reaction. So we get something a little bit under one mole, right?
right? So really not any different than what we've done before and what we were doing in class. It's just, if, I, if I give you moles to start with, you could go right into the stoichiometry step. But if I don't give you moles to start with, you have to convert to moles, and then you can do the stoichiometry. Right, so that's going to be a big chunk of, of these problems is how do I take the units I start from and get to moles, or how do I take the moles at the end and convert that into grams or something else? It's just we're, we're just adding pieces to either side of the stoichiometry step. And again, stoichiometry sounds like an intimidating word, and it it's it is a little intimidating, um, but it's almost intimidating in how simple it is. If it's a balanced reaction, these conversions are just always going to come from our coefficients of the balanced reaction, right? And we're just able to combine them any way we want to, in order to make the units cancel out and get us allow us to figure out what you know, something about a specific compound. <clears throat> All right, let's do another practice. So this is what's called a mass to mass stoichiometry, where I'm, you're gonna start with the mass of one compound, convert it to moles, convert moles of that compound to something else, and then go back to another mass. So for this first one, our the road plan is going to be mass of CO2, or sorry, mass of acetylene to moles. of acetylene of C2H2 to moles of carbon dioxide to grams of carbon dioxide. All right, so we're just building up around that stoichiometry step, which is the middle step here. That's the stoichiometry step. The other steps are just using molecular weights to get to moles or using molecular weights to go from moles to grams. So if we wanted to write this out, ignore that bottom question for now, just because I'm going to use that empty space at the bottom to write out our conversion for the first question. So to write our conversion out, we go kilograms to grams. Then we can use the molecular weight to get to grams of C2H2. So C2H2 is going to be a molecular weight of 24, 26, 0.04 ish. I suppose we I didn't actually fill in the balanced reaction, so that might be a good idea as well, right? It's 
awesome. All right, so we can get to moles of C2H2 before we balance, but we can't go from moles of C2H2 to anything else until we have it balanced. So now that we've finished balancing it, we can say for every two moles of the C2H2, make four moles of carbon dioxide. And we only have one more step. So that gets us to moles of product, which if the question just said, how many moles of product could you make, we'd be done. If it says how many grams of CO2 can we make, we just have to do one more molecular weight conversion where we go from moles of CO2 to grams of CO2. So moles of one mole of CO2 is 40, 4.01 grams within sig figs, depending on what periodic table you're using. It, that one might be a little bit different. So all of this put together answers this entire question in one conversion, but we could have stopped at any point along the way to hit enter to get to get moles of C2H2 and then go take that number to go to moles of CO2 and then take that number to go to grams of CO2. If we're just trying to answer the question as it's asked though, we can put it all into our calculator at once if we write it out like this. Which, and it should give us an answer of, One point six nine times ten to the four grams of CO two five times a thousand divided by twenty six point oh four times four over two times forty four point oh one put it all together and you get 16,900 grams or 1.69 times 10 to the four grams. Hey, Sean. Right, so it's, yeah. Um, I just feel super confused for some reason, like I won't be able to do this on my own because I don't know where you got the 26.04 grams or the 44.01. I don't know where. So straight off the periodic table. Okay. You're just, just okay. taking um, whatever the formula is, and we're just going to add the pieces together. So if the formula is C2H2, then that means we have two carbons and two hydrogens. Oh, okay. So two times the mass of carbon, which is 12.011 grams per mole. And two times hydrogen, which is 1.008 grams per mole. All right, so, so these molecular weight conversions, grams to moles, are always going to come from the periodic table. Just add up all your pieces for whatever compound you're talking about. So you know, for CO2, it was one times the mass of carbon plus two times the mass of oxygen. 
Okay, that makes sense. Thank you. No problem. So we'll do, I'll circle the ones from the periodic table are circled in blue. Grams to kilograms, that's straight off our conversion sheet, right? That's a definition. And then this one in the middle where you're going moles of one compound to moles of a different compound is always going to come from the balanced reaction. Right, any questions about this one? So with that in mind, let's just do this one more time. And I'll let you guys work. This is the same question, except it's you're starting from five kilograms of C2H2. And I want to know how many grams of oxygen, not how many grams of CO2 are you going to make? How many grams of oxygen are you going to use? So same steps though, just one of your molecular weights is going to be different. Right, so first steps are the same. We got to get to moles of C2H2 before we can do anything else, right? So those steps didn't change. Kilograms to grams, 26.04 grams of C2H2 is one mole of C2H2. Then we want to, this question is asking about grams of oxygen, not grams of CO2. So we're going to change up our stoichiometry step to go from moles of C2H2 to moles of oxygen. And that means now we're in moles of O2. And so we're going to use a different molecular weight conversion for our last step, because we're talking about O2, not, we're not talking about CO2 anymore. We're talking about oxygen, O2. So that's just going to change our last two steps. Right, so, and we can pick Our stoichiometry step can be whatever we need it to be based on what the question's asking. If the question asks us how many grams of CO2 are produced when you also make you know, this many moles of water, we can compare CO2 to water. Whatever two things are being compared, in this case, C2H2 and oxygen gas, those are the two things we're comparing. So that's the conversion that we're going to use. 
is going to allow us to convert from moles of C2H2 to moles of oxygen. And when we plug all that in, at 1.54 and to the fourth grams of O2. And again, if you if it helps you see it, the logic better, you can stop right here and hit enter on your calculator so that you can go from five kilograms to moles of C2H2. And then you could take moles of C2H2 and turn it into moles of oxygen. And then you could take moles of oxygen to go to grams of oxygen using the molecular weight. And it's just, it's with these stoichiometry problems, it's always a matter of how do I get to moles of my starting material or whatever information you give in to start? How do I get to moles? And then how do I get from moles of one thing to moles of another? And that's always going to be from the coefficients. All right, questions on anything on this page so far? We've been at this for a bit now, for a couple hours, so it's understandable. You need to take a break, or if it's starting to all sound like gibberish. All right, we'll stop there for this little mini mini lecture, I would just remind you of the of these um, vocab terms. Limiting reactant is what you run out of first. If you're having a if you have a starting amount of for two different compounds, odds are one of them is going to run out before the other. They're not going to run out perfectly at the same time. In our car analogy, you're not going to use up your wheels the exact same time that you use up your chassis. Right? So odds are you're going to have a little bit left over on one way or the other. Or in other words, one runs out first, and that makes it the limiting reactant. And the easiest way to see what the limiting reactant is, is to take both of these two numbers and see how much product you can make. Whichever number is lower must be the right number. If I have enough wheels to make 70 cars, but I only have enough engines to make five cars, well, that means I'm running out of engines first. Right? And that also answers, um, that also gives you the theoretical yield at the same time. So in this case, we could say, if I use up, keep it color coordinated, 2.0 moles of iron and every four moles iron, two moles product. And if I do the exact same thing with the oxygen, I know it got a little crammed down there. We're going to wind up with one mole of product 
versus And these can't both be right. You're always going to pick the lowest number when you do this because you can't keep making product once you run out of oxygen. It's like you can't keep making hamburgers once you run out of patties. So if you're making hamburgers and you have enough supplies for everything except for patties, your patties are your limiting reactant, which in, in this case, our limiting reactant would be the oxygen, right? So and the lab simulation goes through these, this as well, Mike, um, and we will continue to practice with this on Wednesday. I believe you have everything you need to get through the labster simulation and start on the homework as well. Um, you might just have to review some of those vocab terms that we were talking about at the end of class. Any questions so far? All right, then you guys have listened to me talk for far long enough today. I'll let you get started on this and I'll get the videos uploaded here in uh, a little bit. And um, I'll be here till at least five or until, ever, um, until everybody's done working, whatever comes second.